Welcome back, it's your guy Engineer Mojo with uh, another tutorial video. Today it's a 2003 Toyota Tacoma brake pad and rotor change. To get it started fast, tools you'll need are jack and jack stand, socket wrench, 21mm socket for your lug nuts, 17mm deep socket for your caliper mounting bolts, brake cleaner spray, pliers, large C-clamp or brake caliper tool, which you can rent for free from your local auto parts store, disc brake quiet, and that's optional, and caliper mounting bolts torque spec is given as well. This process applies to all first gen Tacomas, also 4 runners, T100s. Uh, there will be some slight variations if you have a 5 lug, but not too much difference. Here I have my jack stand and my jack setup for safety. Here I'm going through the process of wheel removal. For added safety, I placed it well underneath the car because for whatever reason, if the car ended up slipping off the jack stand, this provides a second layer of safety. The car will land on the wheel. It's sacrificial and may save you know, a broken finger or foot or something of that nature. Just an added tip that you may want to use. At this stage, I do a preliminary check that the rotor I bought is the correct rotor. And I also do a check of the brake pads as well, just to know if I need to go back to the store to get the correct part. It's always good to start here. Make sure you have the correct parts to save you any time and hassle. Now it's time to actually begin the process of the caliper housing removal. This is an overall view, panning around to show you the two mounting bolt locations. These are 17 millimeter size bolts for your socket, pointing them both out here. That's the bottom, and that's the top one. As mentioned earlier, these mounting bolts should be torqued down to about 80 to 90 foot pounds. So it'll take a little strength to get these off. Use a long extended breaker bar or socket wrench to get these off. Now it's almost about time to remove the caliper, but before that you want to make sure you have something solid to place it on because you have a brake line that's connected directly to it and you don't want any tension on that line that may break that line or cause damage. So before you remove the caliper entirely from the rotor assembly, the knuckle, you do want to place something solid there. You see here I put a, a spare paint can right beside the caliper. I'm shimmying the caliper off the rotor and knuckle assembly making sure not to put too much tension on the brake line. Place it right on the paint can. There, a little slippage, but it's okay. It's not any tension or force on that line. And now I have a nice, safe place to work on the caliper and removing the brakes without having any tension on the line. Here's a close-up right now I'm about to show. You see there, the line still has some slack in it. It's not very taut. That way you don't have to worry about breaking the line and causing additional work for yourself. Removing the old rotor is very simple. There's no mounting screws like some vehicles. It just slides right off of the hub and knuckle assembly. With the rotor off, I do one more check just to make sure I have the correct part. Checking thicknesses, overall bolt pattern. It doesn't hurt to check one more time. Installation of a new rotor is the reverse of removal. Just slides right back on the knuckle and hub assembly there. Take note of how I hold the rotor from the sides. That just ensures that there's no foreign oil or debris that gets on the rotor. Uh, surface where the actual brake pad is applied. Uh, you'll have to clean that anyways, but it just helps not to have any additional on there. To ensure I remove foreign oils from the rotor, I hit it with a can of brake clean spray, a couple spritzes, and a wipe down with a microfiber towel. Get this all cleaned up. So do the front and the back. I don't show the back in the video, but do front and back here. This is a quick overview of the brake caliper components. You have the caliper on the left and the right. You see pins there that hold in the brake pads. These are anti-rattle pins. Pins are connected at the top with an anti-rattle spring kind of mechanism there. And I'll show you that a little closer later on in the video. And also in the middle of the brake pad, there's also another retaining clip. And all this gets replaced with the new hardware that you receive with your new brake pads, except for the anti-rattle pins. The, you do reuse those, so make sure you keep those handy. Quick side video showing the removal. That's the anti-rattle spring clip holding in the anti-rattle pins being removed. I'm using a plier for all this work. Pushing those out with the pliers. Shimming those, rotating, shimming, getting that all out. Pretty easy. It's not that bad at all. One out. Second one out. Now the middle retaining clip is out. It's all removed. Very, very important next step, you want to go to your brake master cylinder and pop the top. This allows airflow and reduces the pressure when you're depressing the caliper pistons. 
If you don't pop this top, you could break a valve within your master cylinder. You don't want to do that. That gives you extra work. So very important step. Remember to pop the top a little bit. You don't have to remove it. You don't want any foreign material falling inside your master cylinder. Just pop it a little bit to allow pressure to be reduced. Next step, I take a big C-clamp to depress the caliper pistons. I use the C-clamp and the old brake pads as a bearing surface and I depress the pins. You can also accomplish this with a loaner brake tool from your local auto parts store. Usually they are free or if you have a brake tool in your possession, it works as well. Here I have it set up showing you how to put it. Put the old brake pad against the pistons, take the C-clamp and begin to slowly tighten it to close and depress the pistons. This pushes the hydraulic fluid back into the master cylinder. For usual, I compare the newly bought brake pads with the old existing that were removed. Make sure that all the mounting locations are the same, holes are the same, compare all the spring clip retainers, and also note that I am reusing the anti-rattle pins as you see them on the bottom right, reusing the old ones. They don't provide new ones in the hardware for the new brake pads, but everything else is replaced. The brake pads and all the retaining clips, new hardware for you. Pads come with anti-squill backing on the pads, but you can always double up and apply some anti-squill gel or spray on that as well, just to reduce squeaks. Here I show the process of reinstalling the new brake pads. I show reinstalling the anti-rattle pins and how I put all the retaining clips back in side their respective places. Don't forget to torque down the caliper mounting bolts. As a reminder, torque spec for these is 91 foot-pounds. Install of new rotors and brake pads is now complete. Just reinstall the wheel. If you have any questions, please let me know down below in the video comment section. Also, any tips. I love tips to make this easier. I'm always working on my truck. So if you have any tips to make this job easier, let me know that as well. I love to hear from the community on these topics. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. I personally really enjoy YouTube and the community that it brings together. Thanks for watching again. I'm out.